All right, it is going to be today, May the 23rd, a Sunday, and it's just going to be a daily, not a daily, but like a weekly recap of today's trades, and I don't know, the grades I have for this week isn't that nice because it, it is a bit flawed because I've only had four trades today, and you know, in that case, it just, it isn't exactly perfect, uh, ideally more trades, you know better data maybe I'll do it two weeks if I'm not trading that much but I'll just do it for this week why not I'm just gonna go over the four trades I made and of course for this week I had four trades all of them were winning trades but they were all puny percent gains puny position sizes my average dollar size was four hundred and eighty nine dollars which is something I have been trading for a while it's so strange because on crypto I forgot how much I made I'll take a look hold on let me come back okay I'm back yeah with crypto actually for this week right from the 16th I believe yep one week I'm up $46 trading crypto and they were a little larger positions than it was back here I just don't want to show my crypto trades because I'm uh, I joined the crypto rockets group so I just I just don't want to I mean even maybe it doesn't matter but I just don't want to go over there entries and access I, I followed a few of them traded it not exactly chased it I've said, well I didn't chase any of them I did follow like one or two of them just to get an idea but a lot of the trades a majority of them were just me looking at the alert and then seeing how I could trade off of that alert if I could find a setup in that or some kind of a you know just just a way to look at their trade and then see if there's something I would like to trade in regards to it so you know, and on those I'm up forty-six dollars trading crypto, and here I'm up what? Let's see, maybe give or take twenty. You know, give or take thirty bucks, and I just and I made more <laughs> trading crypto. I don't know, maybe I'm just being too tough on myself trading stocks because when I trade crypto, I'm able to hold for like two hours. You know, I, I'm just very not stressed out about it or. You know, just super focused. It's just not not that it's bad to be super focused, but it's more easy to trade if you ask me. And I, I even missed a, a one trade um I did that would have been really profitable today. I traded yesterday too crypto. I, I just I don't know. I think I just need to take a more easy trading stocks, not be afraid to trade larger position sizes, not being afraid to hold trades longer. I kind of have to you know look at it as if I was trading crypto not to take things just so incredibly hard on myself but there was one thing to note here today this week wasn't really that volatile markets weren't as nice still price action a lot of things to trade but it was any it was nothing perfect and I did miss GGII twice for a morning panic balance play I just did not get executed two times so that's something else to take into consideration I just have to take things um, on a, in, in one sense I have to take things a little more easy just not so you know sweaty just just to take it a little step back and just focus on the overall pattern and setup and just try to be as as I, as good as I can with that so average dollar gain seven dollars um, I wouldn't mind if my average percent gain was like five but that clearly was not the case here I just have to get better with my trading overall just need to learn to hold some of these a bit longer I'm gonna go over them just to see exactly how I how I did but yeah let's go ahead and just start to go over just four trades so a very short re weekly recap and the first one is GVSI morning panic bounce play and that is 517 so let's look at GVSI May the 17th right about here so it kinda looks like it had its first well it had a it, it's it's had a nice run up right but this was like the first somewhat big just nice and clean red day this one was kinda similar but this one had a lot more range and this is where I played a morning panic bounce play let's go back here I guess I don't need to go back that far 
yeah. 517 is right here. And let's see, my entry was at 404 and my exit was 401. So let's look at 404, 937. Let's bring this a bit closer. 937 was right here. So this green candle, first green candle, 404, give or take right about there. Looks like it was the very top of this green candle, but I don't mind it too much. It seems like I missed the initial drop, the initial reversal here in the 39.3 level, give or take. And I went ahead and took a buy here instead because it kind of put up what was, to me, a, a higher low in that sense, just risking it off without... I guess the wick right here wouldn't have been too bad. Or you can risk uh, the day low if you want to have a little more, you know, um, leeway. But it looks like I bought right there, 404, and my sell was at 41 at 940. So let's go to 940, and I sold right here at 41. So my buy was right here, and then my sell was right here, right at that VWAP level. So one thing I've been really trying to get better at with these setups is just trying to sell a little after the VWAP. This one was a bit nicer because it didn't just get a little further from the VWAP level, but it got much higher. It looks like another 10%. You know, I can't be too upset because I am trying to get better at this, and this wasn't really the best price action. That is some craziness right there. And it doesn't seem like we had an obvious big volume candle either. That would say that would really signify that you know it's a potential bottom, but I say that's overall a pretty good trade. I I just need to keep getting better at holding these. Clearly there was more range here. I sold at 41, which seems to be right under that VWAP level. Ideally, in a perfect sense, maybe a sell at 418. Not expecting it to get as high as it did here, because you know you never know. And this stock did continue to fade the rest of the day you know there it got to the 30 so not not too bad second trade ggii okay so this is a number five lower low this is probably i need to change this one you know this was a higher low it wasn't exactly a higher low from that panic you know but it, more or less it was pretty similar to it in that it wasn't at the very bottom. GGII, let's look at GGII for the 17th. Okay, so it looks like we had this nice run up and this was just the first red day here. Like the first nice big red day that actually broke this level right here. The wick of this green candle. So really giving some kind of a sign that this thing could head to the bottom it did hold itself for the rest of the week but overall it just you know looked very bearish that day let's go ahead and get to the 17th here as well a little further back looks like this thing just faded the entire day here Let's do it off of this right here, and it looks like my entry was 81.5 at 10.05, so this was later in the day, right, 85, well, no, not 85, 81.5 at 10.05, so let's look at 10.05, oh, I remember this trade, 10.05 right here, and my entry was 81.5, so give or take right here first green candle this is probably one of the two days that I missed my entry with the morning panic bounce play right here just missed it put up this lower low what I really liked about this setup is that it was just this big volume candle signifying that this could be the bottom at least for now so first green candle took a buy at 815 let's see when I sold I sold at 828 and two minutes later, so 1007, 828. My buy was right here. Right, my sell was right here, 828. So you would take the middle of this candle right here. Uh, I'm just like, again, I'm not good at holding. I'm, I'm good at holding crypto setups long, but 
I, like I said, I just need to take things a bit more easy with stock trading. You know, I sold right here, probably didn't like the price action on level two. And it did, you know, consolidate, so give or take here. And it eventually did touch that VWAP level. It even passed it a bit right here. I need to get good at holding setups for longer periods of time. I mean, obviously, it was a bit scary because today was what it seemed to be the first real red day, and that it broke a nice level right here, the wick off of that day right there. And it did downtrend the rest of the day, I believe. Right, it did do a nice drop later in the day, but still, probably just need to get better at holding these setups. So, again, a buy right here, sell right here. I mean, it did cut out a lot of risk to just sell because obviously, you know, I didn't get to that next level until later in the hour, which took a while. But I just probably just need to keep getting better at holding setups longer. Obviously, there wasn't good volatility here. Ideally, it would continue the spike towards that VWAP level, but it it did it. It just took much longer than it did. So overall, not really too bad there. HTZGQ was a uh, morning panic bounce play on the 18th. So let's look at HTZGQ on the 18th. So give or take right here. Looks like the second red day. This thing is in trade with a lot of volatility. Um, it, it's very clean, but the range you know volatility it's not even volatility the range is just not that good in a lot of these sales but this is the second red day morning panic bounce play and just to recap yeah it's still holding this level pretty nicely I'm waiting for that one day that it drops huge ideally it's not because of the news and that, that could be a really nice bounce play but this guy's holding very nicely again it was a uh, morning panic bounce play on the 18th so let's do that on the you know the chart right here Yep, this is the 18th. Yeah, it had a nice downtrend, but then it picked itself up. I think I remembered not trading this inverse head and shoulders. I forgot why. I, maybe I just wasn't there for it. But this is something I clearly have seen a lot of times work successfully to the point where I'm very inclined to trade these things. I like the big volume spike right here. You know, then it puts up a higher low. This is something I want to get much better at especially holding longer and this stock not trading with much range 558 to you know 581 hitting that VWAP level you know 589 just under 10 percent not really a 10 percent plus move even though it shows a nice uptrend here so this is definitely a nice stock for people who trade much larger accounts and position sizes but for me I just you know this is a good stock to, to continue practicing with, especially if we get another one of these. So let's go ahead and get back to the morning panic bounce point. Let's just do it off of that level right here. And I bought at 932, 584. So 932, I like how I bought at the best, you know, the very bottom. Also, nice big volume spike again, nice big volume candle, 932. And what was it again? It was at 584, 100 shares. Nice entry right here. This was a very nice entry. I really liked my entry. And if I remember this trade, I think I sold right here, right under the VWAP. Sold the very next minute at 592. So 933. At least I sold somewhat up in this green candle on the wick, but yeah this one was disappointing you know did I put here did I trade well nope I put no sold early again I just need to get better with these setups this was a clear example of a morning panic bounce play maybe a little confusing because it put up a higher low here but I could have loaded up had I have you know missed my entry here but I guess I held there just wanted to sell for quick profits but you know the way I'm doing it isn't going to be good in the long run so I'm continuously working on this and getting better at it so that I can hold better you know maybe it wouldn't have been that bad if I sold at 598 just slightly above VWAP and then maybe consider a buy if it starts holding it you know right here the volume is fading so yeah just had a nice spike eventually to 617 I just have to get better at these Great entry. I've done this plenty of times. Very nice entries, but I need to keep working on my exits. 
I'm glad I put null there that I didn't trade it perfectly you know some of these weren't too bad because you know it's better sometimes to just sell early than to risk holding for such a long period of time and then it continues a downtrend or something but you know I could have definitely have done better here this is something where I could have sold at you know maybe right here at six and then that would have been a much profitable trade imagine let me see if I sold at six I mean sure that would have been you know just a two almost three percent move but the stock doesn't have much range I would have felt much better and I have done something like that but again it's just something at least I've I've become aware of that problem of selling too early my entries are good just have to keep getting better last trade this one was kinda sketchy FBCD and this was uh, number two this is like that setup I've been trying with Jack on his webinar I really like it this one is actually at 20 cents now so let's just go over it the 20th FBCD Alright, let's start from here and then get to the 20th. You know, just a very nice uptrend. Following that setup, if you look at it at a 15 day, 15 minute chart, I don't even have that configured. Let's see if I can do this. I don't, I don't really use thinkorswim. That's pretty much it. and then let's see if I still have that picture this is somewhat it I don't know if I'll be able to show this very clearly but I don't even know if it's off of this level it might be but nice spike and then it downtrends and then it puts up right here it's like a lower high and then it has that drop and then it breaks above the level following it right here back and forth consolidation and then it breaks out and that's clearly the case. I mean, now being at, you know, 21 cents and my buy was at 16, I just need to get better at holding these trades longer. This one isn't perfect because the volume was crap. If it traded with more volume, probably would have been more inclined to hold it longer. But I like how this one is working because that is going to motivate me to not just trade the setup more, but to hold the setup longer. And of course, it's not going to always work out, but this one clearly did. You know, I'll buy at 16 now at 21. So, and this is something like where, uh, if you know the penny stocking framework, it goes from a number two to a nice uptrend to a number three where it gets exponential. If I were to show an example, it would just be like GG II. If you look at a daily chart, right where it goes from like nice uptrend here to just crazy uptrend so let's get back to the 18th was it the 20th all right all right 20th is right here and again just a nice move let me just go back a little further if I know how to do it clearly don't just just a very nice setup right there so let's bring this a bit closer and yeah this thing just did not trade with good volume I bought 16 cents was my entry at 943 so right here 943 16 cents so ideally I should have bought right here like when it held VWAP at 15 and the whole breakout was over that 15 level Sure, it can have a downtrend at the market open because there were some people with market sell orders from the other day or whatever or before the market opened. So that isn't something to worry about. But when it has this drop, um, give or take right at that VWAP level, 15 cents, I probably should have considered a buy there. Just was a bit anxious, new setup. So I can't hurt myself. I can't beat myself up too much for that. Nice uptrend right here. I hated it. I was like, is this thing just going to spike? and float on air like this and then I have to chase I don't want to chase it I'm not gonna trade it and that was the mindset it was pretty frustrated but then when it started having this dropping is when I took a buy at 16 right here um, at 943 right 16 at 943 that's right just because there was a bit of a downtrend and I thought alright maybe it's gonna give or take hold off 
on this VWAP level. Nope, turns out big seller. Well, some guy had to sell a lot of shares. Crazy mess. If I was aggressive, would have bought more shares into here, but I didn't. You know, held through this, and then my sell was at 16.3 at 9.50, almost 9.51. So almost 9.51 right here, and I sold at 16.3. So. I really don't regret that just because I didn't like that dip right there. Who knows what it could have done. Me not knowing the setup too much, still practicing with it and wasn't sure if this was, you know, maybe just me um, playing games with my mind thinking that this is a setup. It is. It worked out. But the here, you know, here the volume is just bad. But I, I did get a sell there at that 16.3 level right here in this candle at the top sure it did get to what 16.5 if you want to count the wick 16.6 had another drop that seller had more shares to sell uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't the same person just a lot of selling and then it kind of held itself above the VWAP level right here it got as high as 16.8 or if you want to be picky 16.9 at this part of the day and um, it did downtrend a little but then Really, the next day is when it started to pick up and it got, you know, as high as 20. Oh, wow, 21. So, just a new setup that I'm focusing on. I like the setup. I'll keep working on it, seeing if I can find the same exact thing. Right now, the closest one is HTZGQ. 15 day, 15 minutes. I don't like how that pre market after hours action is showing, but. You know, give or take, again, we have that. I don't even know how to get it. It looks, it just looks strange on TD Media Train. I'm used to a trade pro, but yeah, just, just a spike here potentially. And then uh, I don't even know if this is where I, I saw this price action at, but we have a spike here, right? Then we have a downtrend. And then we put up right here, this is the lower high, and then it ideally consolidates like the way it's doing here. Then it breaks the lower high, it gets close to the high, so maybe it does a break towards seven, right? Or maybe ideally above seven, and then it consolidates back and forth, and then it breaks that ultimate high. So this is the closest thing that I see to that setup that I'm looking at where it goes from a number two to number three. This could be a bit of a different case because of the fact that it is a mainstream stock has a lot of people trading it. This thing is very dependent on news so it could always have you know just some amazing news come out and just break the pattern and spike up or even gap up or some bad news and then it has a gap down so it's not extremely the same but I like this one because it does trade with a lot of volume it has plenty of liquidity so you know this is the closest thing I see right now to this so maybe there's another one and I just haven't seen it but that's that's the idea I have right here which HTZ GQ the closest one to that setup here with FBCD just gonna call it off I want to get better at holding my trades longer not being so scared maybe even trading a larger position size Mr. GGII for a morning panic twice. They can't get too upset with that. I think on the first one it was a bit of my fault because I was hesitant. But the second time I just wasn't executed. I could have maybe have changed my limit a little higher. I think I would have changed it to um, like eight, eight and a half pennies. I think maybe I would have gotten executed instead. I had it at eight four five again. Just little things like that. I don't mind too much, but. That HTZGQ trade, you know, had I have traded that one better, I would have felt a lot better. I just have to keep getting better with these things. And I'm going to keep trying that new setup, the number two setup, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to call it off right here. Pretty good. Um, to see this recap here, I'll just keep working on my setups, holding them longer. Kind of embarrassing. I made more trading crypto than, than I did here trading stocks. Maybe crypto's the way to go for me. I don't know, but I'll keep working on it. A lot of nice setups. Hopefully, you know, there were some nice ones this week too. If not, that's totally fine. You know, it's summer. What can you expect? You know, it's not the craziest time right now in the markets. It's been worse, but let's hope it gets better.